So today I'll be doing a style analysis video on the Barbie movie. And as you can see, I've got my pink on because I'm ready for it. Alright, so my boyfriend and I went to go see the Barbie movie and there is a lot to unpack here. Also, if you are new to this channel, we do videos related to couture, style, and analysis, hence this video. This is my second time re-recording this video because the lighting was worse on the first time I recorded it and it was nighttime. Give this video a like and subscribe if you want to see more things like this. Welcome to the fan. So I found out that Barbie was actually born the day that Mattel president and creator Ruth Handler debuted the doll at the American International Toy Fair in New York. And then Barbie is actually named after her daughter, which is Barbara Millicent Roberts. She debuted on March 9th, 1959. Interestingly too, Barbie's backstory tells that she grew up in the fictional city of Willows, Wisconsin, which is a very far cry from California because, you know, in the Barbie movie, Ken has a job at the beach doing beach. I think we've all recalled that there's a Malibu Barbie and everything that Barbie has ever been associated with is in California because as well when she goes to the real world she's skating on the LA boardwalk. So if that's not California I don't know what is. In the movie Ruth Handler appeared and talked about how she made Barbie but at the end of the movie when Barbie comes back to reality for good she actually adopts her maker's last name so she became Barbara Handler as her official name in the real world. This is very symbolic because it's her adopting her maker's last name and this is like adopting a mother's last name. I'm going to be avoiding political and controversial topics. At least I'm going to try to in this video because I know there's a lot of controversy about this movie. But maybe this is also symbolic of matriarchy because Barbie Land is run by women. And in the patriarchal lineage that is our world, aka the real world, men's names are passed down through their children. But here, the mother of all Barbies passes her name down through the stereotypical Barbie, the most iconic Barbie. And in this way, it's kind of like matriarchy of Barbie land. So the idea came from paper dolls originally. So Ruth wanted to create a three-dimensional doll because she saw her daughter playing with 2D paper dolls, pretending they were students, cheerleaders, and career women. I played with paper dolls myself when I was a little girl, and I can see the appeal of making this a 3D doll. This is actually quite well represented with how often Barbie changes outfits in the movie. There's at least eight outfit changes in Barbie, all of which I think are just gorgeous, except for maybe the cowboy one. I was not really a fan of that outfit. I just don't really like Western styles in general. Leave a comment down below which of those Barbie outfits you did or did not like. This kind of showcases that idea of like the paper dolls. You can change her clothes and play dress up with her as much as you'd like. I mean, of the many outfits on the Barbie movie, there was the PJs, she was wearing the blue beach outfit, the T three piece set with that hat, the shirt, the jacket, or the dress, whatever. Um, she was going down the slide that gingham pink white dress, the disco dance dress. Okay, I'm not keeping accurate count on my fingers. What am I doing? But then there's also the boat outfit, um, the snowmobile outfit, the car outfit as she was going out of Barbie land, rollerblades on LA boardwalk, and the one where she went to go meet the weird lady. And I'm sure I'm not even listing all of them right here. There's something to be said about how in the reality of the real world versus Barbie land, in Barbie land, all the Barbies are on tiptoe and that is their normal foot. And this is to imitate the actual real Barbies that we play with, which have tiptoe heels as well, because they're plastic, so they can be stuck in that formation. In the movie, Barbie steps out of her heels and her feet stay in the same arch position as they were in the heels. Ours go flat. And Barbie at one point becomes flat-footed, as you can see from the trailer, and she remarks how awful the heels feel, and she wouldn't be wearing them either if her feet were in this shape and were not in tiptoes, which is something Unfortunately, a lot of women have to deal with something we deal with when we try to put our feet into those torture contraptions. I'm looking at you, four inch heels. You know how painful you are. So this 
creates the theory the movie presents that being tiptoes at all times is her sort of natural foot and our natural foot is to be flat footed in reality. So the theory the movie brings up of why Barbie is always wearing heels is because that it is f as comfortable for her as it is as comfortable for us to wear Birkenstocks. Like Birkenstocks, the shoes actually match the shape of her feet, which then makes it comfortable for her. And for reference, what I'm referring to is that Birkenstocks are shoes which, after you supposedly wear them for a while, they will conform to the shape of the wearer's foot. Some more really interesting tidbit about Barbie is that she was inspired by the 50s and 60s when she was created, which makes sense. There was a lot of little girls too at the little Barbie movie when I went there with my boyfriend. I don't know if I would have let my kid go see that because there was a lot of adult references and I believe most people understand that this was a movie written for grown-ups. Outside of the movie being written for adults though, it was actually inspired by an adult character, a actual German call girl, a high-end one. Barbie's physical appearance was inspired by Bill Lilly, a German doll created in 1952 which was based on a high-end call girl named Lilly who was featured in the comic strip Bild Zeitung. And I'm sorry, I can't speak German. She was sold as an adult novelty in bars and tobacco shops. Definitely not as a toy for children. Ruth saw the Bill Lily doll while on vacation in Europe and brought it home." End quote. Lily, as you can see, was also wearing a giant poofy skirt reminiscent of the 50s poodle skirts and housewife dress attire with polka dots. In the movie, Barbie was actually wearing a similar silhouette dress when she went down the swirly slide. Honestly, when I think of the swirly slide in the movie, all I can think of is like a swirly straw. The dress that she wears going down this slide has that sort of poodle skirt silhouette which is common from the 50s and 60s. There's also something that has to be said about the stereotypical appearance that Barbie has and yes she is stereotypical Barbie. So Barbie has blonde hair and blue eyes which is in likeness to Bill Lily. She looks like she's of European descent much like Bill Lily with her blue eyes, fair skin, and long blonde hair. Very common for German descent. Perhaps this is why Barbie has a sort of sex appeal. Not only because she's modeled after a high-end call girl, but because she conforms to the standard conventions of beauty. Another interesting fact I learned is that Barbie and Ken were actually modeled after Ruth Handler's own children, Barbara, which we know, and Kenneth, her son. So they were actually siblings. But in the movie, she only shares platonic feelings for Ken. I'm left wondering if it's because in real life they're actually related. That's a thought for you to think about while you're in the shower next time. There's a scene at the beginning of the Barbie movie where the narrator narrates that at the beginning of time there were dolls, but there were only baby dolls, and girls could only play mothers. But what is the fun in being a mother? I'm sure you mothers out there have a bunch of fun stories about how fun your little monsters are. Leave those down in the description down below. <laughs> Would you still want to play with baby dolls as a kid, knowing how your kids are now as an actual mother? That's something I'm curious about now, genuinely. Leave me your comments down in the description. But back to the topic. So the children start playing with baby dolls, and the only dolls before Barbie were just baby dolls. But then a giant, voluptuous Barbie, massive really, you can see in the trailer, appears, and then the girls are just like, whoa, and then they just start smashing their dolls on rocks and whatever they can get in favor of the giant Barbie. While this scene is funny, it is actually true because the only dolls in history ha used to be baby dolls before Barbie came along. And while her figure is criticized for being unrealistic for women to achieve, it was actually a revolutionary figure for a doll at the time and this is because it was a figure of a woman and it had curves. So. It was the first time girls could actually play with a doll that was representative of what they would grow into being. Something else I learned, and I'm really happy Mattel did this, is that in 1971, Mattel changed her eyes to look forward rather than sideways glancing at you and introduced a version of the doll where her teeth were showing. So she's like 
smiling. I'm smiling, but you can't see it under this mask, can you? And I'm thinking to myself, well, isn't it a good thing? that your doll isn't giving you side eye anymore while you're playing it because I don't want my doll to be looking at me with side eye when I'm already disappointed with my life as it is sometimes. I ain't gonna need my doll to give me any more judgment at the end of the day. Speaking of judgment and acceptance, the I am Knuff shirt that Ken's wears is very hilarious. In fact, my boyfriend just kept cracking up in the movie theater when we saw that part and when he saw the shirt being sold online after we came home from the movie I was like no we can all agree that it's actually a very iconic item an item of progress that it stands for in the movie because it represents the acceptance that Ken understands at that point that he doesn't need no woman to be complete and he doesn't need to seek Barbie's approval you can view it as a reversal of gender roles where it's the same thing on par of I don't need a man. In case you didn't notice, Barbie is actually a Chanel girl. At the musical start of the day intro in Barbie Land where Barbie wakes up from her heart-shaped bed and gets ready for her day, we see her wardrobe and closet is full of Chanel items and the classic Chanel items. This aesthetic does seem to fit our stereotype for Barbie very well because there's classic flaps, tweed sets, all of which are very iconic styles for the house of Chanel. The girly aesthetic fits Barbie, and when you think of Barbie, how much more girly can you get than everything is pink? In fact, the white that you see in the movie on the set of Barbie is not actually white. Margot Robbie did an interview with Architectural Digest. They stated that the whites that you see is actually a very, very pale pink. So there's literally no white on that set. In addition, when Barbie goes to see Ken at his Mojo Dojo Casa house, try saying that 10 times. See if you get your tongue twisted up. Barbie is seen wearing a large Chanel statement necklace. She wears a pink Chanel heart handbag. Chanel is generally seen as a brand that is very feminine, mature, and classic. And these are all things that I'm sure we can all agree describe Barbie. So as a choice for the stylist and the producers to make for clothing, Chanel is a very fitting choice, I would say. Can we also just talk about how great it is that when you go to see the Barbie movies, you get to pose in front of this little backdrop they make that looks like Barbie's plastic packaging. So you get to be a real life Barbie doll. If you enjoyed this video, give this video a like. My name is Mimi and on this channel we do videos related to couture, style, and analysis. Just like how this video is a style analysis. So if you'd like to see more of that, then please subscribe because we'd love to have you. And if we could reach a thousand subscribers, I will be letting my viewers pick the topic of a video that I do next. And until next time, bye!